super thankful you're here. We're gonna we're gonna have a good chat, uh, even if I, I get to see you. <laughs> All right. So I think we are live. Let's double check some things because every time I've said that in the past, there's been a couple of setups. Oh, we are totally live. We have this great show planned for you tonight. Welcome everyone. I am gonna start my show with the same way I always start my show, which is to check some numbers. But I'll tell you, I'm, I'm totally excited about the show tonight because of my guest that's coming. And as many of you that have been watching the show know, I have been really trying to transition to some awesome heroes within the ketogenic diet. Uh, those people who have stood the test of time and or overcome some adversity and then we use their stories to, <coughs> to help folks. Uh, I am going to share a great story here in a minute about a friend and a colleague. Uh, let's start out with some numbers. Uh, I am about 24 hours into my fast, but you know, a little stress does a few things. So we got a sugar of 84 and ketones are 1.4. Tonight I am gonna do some uh, raspberry lemonade uh, for my drink. I am going to fast until Thursday. Thursday I give a really big uh, public speaking event and I know that if I want the best performance, I make sure that I'm not, um, I haven't been eating a lot of carbs recently. Just checking in with those of you chatting. Thank you very much for uh, telling me where you're from. We've had somebody from as far as Scotland this evening, and we have a couple of people saying volume is low. Thank you for saying that. We will turn it up. And um, is your mic plugged? No, but I do think that I can turn things up. So let me just uh, play with that a little bit to get the mic a little louder. And um, Hopefully that makes a difference in what you guys are hearing too. <coughs> so I also have um, a, one big announcement that I am going to uh, share tonight. As many of you know, I, have, uh, I am relaunching that online course starting next week. We will be uh, having a final burst of advertising and sales. And in light of that, let me um, do this, uh, this page here, which um, I, I just want to show you a couple of things before I do that. And then I have uh, the introduction to my guest coming next. So on bozmd.com, for those of you that have any interest in looking at the reviews of a course, and I've taken a few online courses. I've actually helped uh, format a few online courses. And what I like about this, um, this, not just the page, but also, let's see if I can stretch it out a little bit. There you go. Uh, the the bozmd.com is, yep, there's where you can buy the course. But the most important thing that you should look at is what do people have to say about it? What do people that have bought it have to say? And so if you scroll down on bozmd.com and click through some of those reviews, I highly recommend listening to what other people have, uh, had, had, have said about um, the course. It is way more powerful than anything I can tell you. And you'll see that it's cheaper than any way to get a physician's advice on how to step through this. Uh, it is also very organized. So as much as YouTube is a great way to get information, I think we've all found um, a little frustration to say, I just, I was trying to learn something and I got totally taken off on an algorithm. Um, all right, so we are gonna do a couple other traditions. We have a couple of reviews. Again, uh, my, I'm going to compare this to our guest speaker tonight. So uh, I have three tabs we're gonna go through and they are one of the three most recent reviews of an Amazon, uh, Amazon reviews of a book. So my book, uh, Any Way You Can, uh, on October 2nd, we had um, an unknown writer, verified purchase, but Any Way You Can is an excellent read and gives you the scientific information you need to begin a successful ketogenic diet. While sharing the story of Dr. Baz's journey with her mother, uh, this book has been instrumental in bringing about some much needed health and restoration to both my husband and I for our physical health. I strongly recommend uh, this for those serious in turning their physical health around. 
and needing to lose weight as well. Yeah, that is awesome. As independent authors, I know my guest, as well as I really depend on people leaving reviews. So I also have a review here from Keto Continuum. Uh, and this one was on September 30th. Again, very five stars, very good information. Keep up the good work. And then Joseph writes in with an inspirational journey. Uh, Never thought that reading one book will inspire me to become a better me. Uh, this is not a self-help guru type of book. This is a journey of discovering and learning about chemistry, health, love, relationships, and social behavior. All the tools that we need in order to effect, uh, effectively change our behavior towards a better self. You learn, among other things, through the achievement of every small step to grow and to believe in yourself, to empower your mind and body to achieve your best potential, not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually. Joseph, I just love that review. But let's not uh, leave off the latest review of Lies My Doctor Told Me. This review is left on October 1st, and again, five stars to the author. It says, this is, a, this is great. I listened to it on Audible and read along with it on my Kindle. I love doing that. <laughs> and I will keep the Kindle book handy for reference. I enjoy Dr. Barry's videos on YouTube. My health has improved so much applying these truths to my life. Thank you, Dr. Barry, five stars. Which brings me to our, our live presentation of Dr. Barry, who's ready to have me put him on front and center here uh, with uh, a, a perfect show of time. <laughs> He's got a sad face. No, 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 There's, where's the smile? Uh, so like, Dr. Barry, welcome to my show. I am super thankful that you are my guest and I will give everybody, uh, I will take full credit that uh, a few minutes before the show, the our video feed was not showing up like it so, should. So poor Dr. Barry can't see me, although we can see him and we can praise him. Um, I will say uh, between the two of us, I think there is quite a, a lot of fanfare going on in not just the, uh, uh, both of our social media worlds, but throughout the medical world as well. And I just wanna say, Thanks for having the courage to write your book and to be one of the voices that says, yeah, as much as traditional medicine has some awesome options, that, uh, that path doesn't play out nearly as well um, when you're trying to do chronic disease management, when you're watching them for over that, you know, just in your, I think your revelation came somewhere in your second decade of practice as well. And it's just about when you kind of say, I just can't do this for the rest of my life if this is all the better we're gonna do. And we both kind of uh, jumped uh, ship, if you would, just from traditional to how do we blend, there's plenty of awesomeness in the traditional medicine, but not if you've got chronic health problems that you want to go away. So welcome to the show. Ah, thank you so much for that. Um, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to chat with you again. Yes, I think I was trying to think where the first place we met, and I think it was in uh, in New England with the uh, the the two keto guys. Uh, is that what their names are? Yeah. Were they called the two guys? keto dudes had an event in Connecticut. I think is where where we met. Yeah, and then after that, we just kind of said, "Oh my gosh, his journey and my journey have lots of overlaps. Both primary care, both finding uh, our own." Uh, personal or family health that definitely wasn't responding to all the advice we were shelling out and uh, from your weight loss to reverse of heartburn to arthritis to just vibrance of reversing age as you've taken on the ketogenic diet I think uh, that both your testimony and mine as we we live this out continue to uh, be an example to other people yeah, and I think that's how keto's become so popular is by the example of anybody, not just me or you, but just a regular person. When they start eating a proper human diet, they start to heal and get healthier and look healthier, act healthier, and their friends and family notice that change. And, there, and it doesn't take long before the questions begin, the first one being, hey, you look great. What are you doing? Isn't that the best? Uh, so people say, uh, one, one of my favorite stories to tell is I have a, a best friend for years. Uh, she was in my wedding. I was in her wedding. We're both physicians. She's an OB-GYN, and we kind of move into that season where we're 
having babies and keeping a practice. And um, this past year, both of our mothers have died. So she had to come back to South Dakota. And um, I, she couldn't come to my mom's funeral, but as her mom was in her last stages, I drove to the nursing home where she was trying to just be the best daughter possible. And um, <laughs> she said, she grabs my face and says, who does your work? <laughs> So yep. we, we do have some uh, sound issues here that I'm trying to adjust for. So uh, just so everybody knows, I'm trying to work on that. Uh, so keep giving uh, some feedback about the sound. Dr. Barry, your sound is perfect, just so you know. It's uh, mine that seems to be a little low. So we're just playing with a few slides here. Um, well, I have some, some questions for you uh, regarding... Um, uh, just, I think we had lots of people when we said, here's, uh, we're going to have Dr. Barry on and we are going to be focused on a few things that I want to make sure the audience knows about, uh, which is some of your intense efforts over the last, um, I don't know how long it's taken. I'll let you tell that story. Um, uh, but, but before we get, uh, into that part of the discussion, I, I would actually really like to hear, um, when, when you look at. Uh, the impact that you've made on your community. I wonder if you could share some of that um, because I know you quite well. I've seen just a huge um, influence of your your storytelling and your um, your education style. Um, but I really do think the um, the the best uh, testimony comes from when you share what's really happened with your channel and your uh, influence for the population? Well, I think my main mission is to give people hope that it's not too late and to give people the information that they need that is actually going to work. And so, um, you know, as well as I do that a lot of influencers out there, be they doctors or not, they, they try to sound very impressive. And uh, I remember the first time I ever spoke at a keto event, it was the low carb cruise several years ago. And I had this really intricate presentation and uh, I was practicing it and it just occurred. I, I went to the first day of lectures and I heard all these people with these really impressive lectures. And I looked out and I was watching the audience very closely because that's actually who I came for. I didn't, came, I didn't really come to impress the other speakers. And I was seeing people looking around like, what I, I didn't catch any of that what did that mean and so after that first day of lectures i was speaking the last the second day i went back to my cabin and deleted my talk really? and started over because i wasn't there to impress anyone i was there to try to help people when they walked away from that event they were going to have a very simple set of tools they could keep handy in their toolbox pull out at any moment of the day and improve their health and so that, I think that experience uh, changed the way I do all of this. I'm not, I'm not trying to impress anyone. I'm not trying to win debates or medals or get appointed Surgeon General. I'm just trying to help the most people all over the world reclaim the health that they are entitled to, that they deserve and that they're probably currently not enjoying. Yeah, you know, it's, it is an amazing transformation when you meet someone that especially i think your skill set it, it doesn't take long following your channels watching you speak live uh that uh you can see the influence that you have on people as they listen to you give a lecture that there is almost uh i i don't know i don't know if it's like a social intelligence where the speaker can see the needs for, for an audience and then meet them I, as I teach medical students, uh, that connection of pointing out, can you see that your patient's no longer listening? Can you see that whatever language you just tried to explain this, it did not work? And I just think you have a masterful skill at uh, connecting with the audience. And no matter the topic, it really is a, a very engaging delivery of education. So I just, I, I want to praise you uh, for for, for being so good at that, I guess. Thank you so much. I, I try to practice all the time. Uh, Nisha gets tired of hearing the practice. So, um, okay, so I, the, the sound I just did, oh, I don't know if that's, that's the right thing to do either. Let's try this one. 
And I have four, four buttons for sound. And so I'm trying to take this one away because uh, apparently it's uh, echoing now. Not in you, but me. I'm just gonna let you talk because your mic is perfect. So the, the conversations that um, you and I have had a little bit off air, but especially watching your, um, uh, your last few months, I'd like to, you to share what you're doing with something about a documentary. And please um, uh, w let me know or let the audience know, how did you go about creating a documentary? I, I, I think you know that we did a documentary over the last year as well. And so it would be wonderful to hear uh, what your process was to, to creating this and then what your plans are for it. Well, my process was easy. I just showed up and talked a lot. That's That was my role. Uh, I actually had a producer reach out to me, Charles Maddox, who's a great fellow. And he's also, uh, he, he had type two diabetes. And so he said, Hey, let's go to Costa Rica and take some people with type two diabetes and let's teach them how to reverse their type two diabetes with a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And I said, Hey, set it up. I'll be there. And so we flew down to Costa Rica. We took four house guests with us who, uh, had, type two diabetes ranging from pre-diabetes, which I still consider to be type two yep. diabetes, all the way up to severe uncontrolled hemoglobin A1C of 14 on an insulin pump, type two diabetes. And we, uh, it was, uh, I was kind of the, the house doctor, Maria Emmerich was, was, went with us and she was the chef and the nutrition counselor and we had uh, Dr. Jason Fung made some remote appearances and, and lectured to the house guests. And so they basically lived and ate with me and Maria Emmerich and some other folks for seven days as we filmed this. And now it is uh, out, it's premiered uh, last week. There are eight or nine episodes and it's called Reversed, which I think is uh, very appropriate nice because title. it's about re reversing type two diabetes. And uh, so it is on, you can watch it on glued TV or uh, your health network. And it, it, it's also, there are talks, it's going to be aired on Cox networks, which I think is one of the largest privately owned networks in the world. And also PBS is thinking about airing a truncated version of this. So hopefully this docu-series will get in front of the eyes of millions of, of people with, with pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes and, and give them that hope, hey, you don't have to have this for the rest of your life. And then give them the information, this is how you fix it. This is how you reverse it. Well, isn't that a fantastic beginning for uh, just peeking for, into a ketogenic journey that the word reversal and diabetes go together? And as much as you and I both have said, I'm sure, before we entered into the world of, ed, you know, teaching diet before drugs, uh, that I, I don't, I didn't get to use the word reversal very often. I, I think in a handful of patients that just really did uh, almost crazy uh, amounts of exercise to get that uh, weight off. And really, I, I wouldn't have stamped their health as overall better by the time they did lose it. And that was the first like 18 years of practice. Now, as I've in my second decade, I am, I'm never gonna go back to what it was. It was so soul sucking to not be able to offer the hope and, the ed, and, and truly the education that, um, the, that is so needed that <laughs> Medicare, Medicaid don't pay for. Most insurances give you these tiny little windows. And if you really want to do what it is that I think both you and I have a great connection with people is when you can see that they are failing to comprehend, it's, it's nearly impossible for me to walk out that door because I'm like, without my ability to at least clear the air enough and deliver a message that you, that you can begin, uh, they're not going to see me again for three months. And this is never, this is never going to get better with 20 minutes of FaceTime uh, every three months. Uh, so when you, let, let's just, uh, let's just crack behind the scenes a little bit further. So a documentary in a different country and you were gone a week. So what month did you record? I don't remember. My ADD kicked in. <laughs> like summer, spring, fall, how long ago? 
it's always summer, always beautiful in Costa Rica. And uh, it was, I mean, you just have to see this to see the beautiful scenery of, of Costa Rica. It blew me away. I've never, I've been to Hawaii and Costa Rica is every bit as beautiful, if not more. And they also, uh, it's cheaper. So yeah. oh. I'm a big fan of Costa Rica. And I'm also a big fan of reversing type two diabetes. And you had alluded to earlier that you'd had a couple of patients, maybe reversed it with just insane amounts of exercise and weight loss. And I'll have to be honest, during the, the, the first 17 years of my practice, I never saw a single patient reverse their type two diabetes at all. Now I saw patients improve their diabetes, maybe lower their hemoglobin A1C one or two or three tenths of a percentage point but with medication, with uh, strict semi-starvation diets, with crazy amounts of exercise, even with a vegan or vegetarian diet, I saw people improve their diabetes a little bit. But I had never seen a type 2 diabetic completely reverse their type 2 diabetes, all the way back to a beautifully normal hemoglobin A1C. I'd never seen that happen until I started recommending a ketogenic diet and the intermittent fasting that naturally goes along with it. That that was the very first time I even knew that that was possible. Well, and it, and it really blows your mind because now it is the standard that when you look at driving people to a documentary, or I, I think you heard me before I pulled you onto the screen, that one of the solutions I tried to come up with is yes, books were very helpful. Both you and I have reached that, writing it down, using the medium of social media to try and connect with people, and, and really delivering quality education without overpromising in a way that can be a little dangerous in uh, some of that social atmosphere. Uh, but then taking it, I, I think now it, both of us taking it to a, a medium where the education of delivering, uh, what, what my online course does is it steps people through, this is what I would do if you were in my clinic, here's what would be required, here's the next step, uh, don't go on to the next module till you've done this well. And here's some of the places where as you graduate, we're gonna educate you to a different degree. We're gonna ask you to do some different things. So as you transfer some of the information that comes through on your documentary, can you explain to the audience maybe where the education comes from? Is it the observation of how these people, um, cause it was a seven day intervention. Is that kind of what you did? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we lived in the same house for seven days and they, they and so I think it was really great that you know how it is you have a question and you're like oh crap I forgot to ask the doctor a question but if you live with the doctor you can just be sitting on the couch and be like oh yeah I forgot to ask you and I was right there for seven days so they were every question that came to mind I was able to answer and we got a lot of that on video uh, they saw how I ate and I think that was a very you know I'm always telling people to lead by example and I know I no longer eat to give people other, you know, an example of how to eat. I eat because I'm hungry and that, then I go eat. But I eat foods that I know are not going to cause inflammation, not going to cause weight gain. I know that they're delicious and nutrient dense. And I think that, you know, I tell people you need to eat lots of fatty red meat. And that's, that's nice and all. But then when they see me sit down and eat five pounds of chicharron, they're like, he's not joking. He means eat as much fatty meat as you want because I just sit here and watched him do it himself. So he's obviously not afraid of meat. So maybe I shouldn't be afraid of red meat either. And I think it was just, and then also these are real people, right? Uh, we had a, re a retired teacher. Uh, we had just a businesswoman. We had regular people that, that I think people can really identify with. Cause when I'm making a YouTube video, I'm giving you advice, but it, but it's almost like it's going to this hypothetical patient, but in this reversed, docu-series you get to actually see real people sitting there and then asking real people questions like wait i didn't understand what you meant by that tell me say that again and so i think that that's really going to provide a ton of value for people and then over the course of that seven days we had to stop blood pressure medicine we had to take uh, one of the house guests uh, we had to cut her insulin pump by 70 percent because she was already starting to have hypos after just three or four days of a real whole, uh, real food ketogenic diet. 
And then, you know, we were trying to, to start some gentle intermittent fasting. And after three or four days of that, she had to cut her insulin by 70%. That's a, that's a huge uh, success. You know, I get that question a lot. I, I'm on an insulin pump, uh, whether type one or type two, I'm, I'm on constant injection of insulin. Can I do the ketogenic diet? And I'm like, not through social media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. Gotta have you, you damn well better do it, but you need to find a doctor who's knowledgeable, who can walk you through that process of, of decreasing the insulin. Oh, it's absolutely true. So you, you watch that transition of patients that does really restore their health and I'm, I'm fascinated by how quickly you can make a difference and how frustrated, I mean, that was the hardest part for me is, yep, chronic disease management is about, that is what primary care is supposed to be doing if we're doing our best job. But it is definitely <laughs> lacking in reward as the physician because of how long it, it takes to see a difference. And yep. I'm not... I agree. And then often you can go decades with the same patient and see no improvement whatsoever if you're just practicing traditional med medicine, which consists of checking labs, talking about labs, and then prescribing a new medication. Yeah, exactly. You know, that um, the, the danger of uh, advising some of the patients, I mean, when, when someone walks into the clinic and you can see they've got, you know, not just Dunlap, <laughs> they're not just obesity, they have a uh, ring around the ankles from just four hours of wearing their socks. Uh, and those are some of the clues that I have saying, oh, you're going to be a tough transition without, um, you're going to ring out so much of that inflammation on the first week that if I just throw the book at you and say, do it like everybody else, yes, you would be better on the other side. But I mean, I have had some of my patients uh, just go to, they went to the gym, they passed out and bonked their head. And you say, that's fake news. No, they actually did that. And it was because they were on so many medications trying to fight what it is a chronic inflammatory state will do if you, if you don't make that transition. Yep. So th there's several questions that people have been writing in and have been looking at, but I would like uh, to give you the microphone again saying, if you look at the patients that you're most concerned about when they sign up and say, I want to do the ketogenic diet, uh, profile that for people. Well, it's the people with the highest hemoglobin A1Cs. It's the people with the highest blood sugars when they check on their glucometer. It's, it's people who have severe fatty liver disease who are on the borderline about to develop non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. It's people who already have compromised kidney function. When we check their kidney function in the blood and urine, they already have kidney damage. It's people who are already have, starting to notice the first signs of dementia, just the very mildest first of signs. It's people uh, who, are, who just are basically, their body is failing them. And it feels like a failure and it feels like their body has forsaken them, but that's not what's happening. The human body by design is built to be healthy and it's built to heal and it's built to self renew and re regenerate, but it cannot do that if you're slowly poisoning it on a daily basis. And so I think that's the, the great light bulb that goes off is when people realize, Oh, I'm kind of doing this to myself, aren't I? And I'm like, yeah, you kind of are. It's not your fault, but it is definitely your problem. And I think just having that one tidbit of knowledge, they understand. So, so what you're saying is I have the power to fix this. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, you do. Absolutely. I can, I can never fix it, but you can start to fix it immediately. And I think that's the kind of the permission that people need. And then I think they need a blatant review of how their body's currently functioning and, and without, without any sugar coating, just say, look, you're sick as crap. Okay. You're not going to be around much longer. Your spouse is going to be running around with a 30 year old after you have that heart attack or stroke. So if you're fond of your life and fond of your spouse and your children and your, your friends, you better pay attention, You better step up and realize there is hope and you've got the power. You just need to apply what you now know and fix this problem. Amen. Like that process of improving the the hope and i think that's again what you touched on at the beginning part when you scrapped your slides and said how can i stop with the um with the fear tactics which 
I don't know about you, but I've had lots of colleagues that that was their that was their shtick is that here's your prescription, and then they would scold and shame and. God, I wouldn't want to go to the doctor either. <laughs> it was like, no, yep. there has to be a little bit of positive in in there. And I, I don't, um, you know, I think that that translates into the success that you've seen with, um, you know, people interested in the hope and without um, um, really being, you know, disrespectful to the traditional medicine. I think there's no, there is, it, it was soul, soul sucking for me too though. By the end, I just thought if there's no better way for me to transition in medicine, um, and, and I think in part, I, I think I've shared this with you and several of the people that watch my channel that um, I ended up with a lot of patients with addiction and it, it was because of the reward of the relationship that you, you cannot impact a, a, a uh, disease um, management process in the world of addiction without an authentic relationship. Yes, I can give them a shot of Ibitrol. Yes, I can, you know, get them off of heroin or alcohol. But if you're looking for the the six month reward where they're really sober at six months, you have to bridge into that mind, body, spirit. And I think that was what was so attractive to me at a time when, if I write another bloody description or prescription for another one of these problems on the medical list, I think uh, it, it just is a wasted journey. And when you're when you look at some of the attraction that you did to exit the traditional style of medicine, and I have done, it is that reward for ourselves to hear these real live stories. That you know, you said there's a teacher and that the gal with the insulin pump. Um, you know, they're real people. And I think that was what was most heartbreaking is I could relate to all of these people coming to get their 20 minutes with the doctor and they'd show up in their Sunday best and they would have all of their notes carefully organized. And my, and my hope for them was to write more prescriptions. And it was, it was, it was awful. Um, yep. So you, you've had the same experience, it sounds like. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Medicine was drudgery. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think many doctors become much more interested in coding. They, they try, how am I going to be able to build this as a high level of service so I can charge a little more for this visit? How am I going to be able to put a modifier on this so I can bill for this little extra thing I did? And that becomes the challenge because there's no, there's no challenge in traditional allopathic medicine you just you a once you reach game. a certain yeah you, once you reach a certain level there's nothing you could really miss unless you're just an idiot and so you just it's just your own autopilot and so mm -hmm. you start your your brain starts looking for challenges and so a lot of doctors find the financial side of medicine and they're like oh okay if I do this and this then I can upcharge uh, this this visit and get more money and so it almost becomes a money game so instead of them trying to gain this person's physiology which would reap them better health, a happier patient, and a patient that would never shut up talking about them. They're trying to figure out how they can make 10 more bucks for this visit. And of course, that's not all doctors, but a great many doctors are very interested in that sort of thing and not nearly as interested in reversing chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes. Right. And, you know, you have to be honest. Like, there are times where you're like, okay, uh, at my first 10 years, I worked for the corporation side of medicine. So I had these office managers that would say, but doc, you cannot spend that much time with them. But doc, you need to see this many patients a day just to pay for the 28 <laughs> staff members that work for you. And I'm like, well, don't give me so many staff members. I, I need more time to explain why they're, why they're not getting better. And I, I do think that between the puzzle of getting really good at the matching game of medicine, you have this problem, here's the meds I get to use. You have this problem there, oh, he's got these two problems, now I can add this med. And, and that matching game becomes almost like, okay. So you then start to play the coding game, like, okay, so if I, if I could take care of a, you know, a skin lesion, or if I could, you know, have the nurse get the wax out of their ears, just stupid things to say, just quit hounding me for how much I bill on every visit. It doesn't give me the chance to really transcend this human nature of being a physician, which was always, I mean, I've sat in on the side where you interview kids, inter they call them kids, uh, interview students for medical school, and they're all inspired with, all, with the right answers about helping others and, you know, acts of service that the resumes are, 
I mean, they'll also be the Pope. They've done so much service work by the time they get to medical school. And then we just beat that out of them. <laughs> like, yep. you don't have time for that. You don't have time for friends. And you are now in a very basic matching game of medical problems, labs, coordinated to what prescriptions go to that, what procedures match with it, and yuck. Yes. So, all right, so enough hounding on the, on the world of medicine that we both left. I want, to, I want your projections of where you, what you hope this, uh, uh, this documentary does. What's your, what's your best, um, best dream about what it could do? Well, my, my greatest hope is that this documentary will get in front of enough eyeballs that it will bring us much closer to a tipping point where it's not weird if you say, oh, I'm eating a very low carbohydrate diet filled with fatty meat and a little bit of veg, and I'm using that diet to reverse chronic medical conditions. And also, I don't eat for 16 to 18 hours a day to give my body a chance to heal. I mean, currently, if you just went to any metropolitan city and talked to 10 random people on the street, they would think that both of those things sound very weird to them. They don't. They, they might know somebody who tried keto, but they don't know anything about any of this stuff. And my hope is that this will get in big enough markets that enough people will know, oh, no, this is real. This I, I, I saw a docuseries. I watched some videos. I read some articles. I read a couple of books. This is real. You need to do this. And, you know, you don't have to have 51% of the population to have a tipping point. Uh, typically, it's 18 to 20% of the population when they're like, oh, no, that's real. All of a sudden, it, it changes how people look at that topic, and it becomes just almost magically accepted. Like, oh, okay, yeah, keto, perfect, good. And, and you've probably had uh, feedback from patients who said, oh, yeah, my doctor's on board with keto. Uh, he or she told me not to tell anybody they are, oh, but they they do it themselves and they're 100% glad that I'm doing it, but they're not shouting it from the rooftops like they should be if they were trying to be that good humanitarian like you talked about earlier, because they're afraid they'll get in trouble. They're afraid they'll get their, their hand slapped. They'll, they're afraid they'll get judged negatively by colleagues or peers. That's real. But once we reach that tipping point, uh, all those doctors who are secretly recommending keto to their patients can tell all the other doctors to shut the hell up. This works. Uh, there's t more research about a low carb diet than really any other dietary strategy out there. So maybe you should stop uh, hounding me and do some research yourself, doctor. It's, it, it is shocking. I, I, I think you know, and most of the audience knows that I have recently moved to Tampa. So I am in a new medical community. And I am, I, I said, you know, I, I turned 50 this year. And I, as I make this next trip around the sun, I am making, being very wise about the next steps, about how much of a clinic do I want to do and what, um, wh what ways do I want to be reimbursed. And I've had a couple of chances to just shake, you know, palm to palm uh, some physicians. And I almost forgot. I think why I keep turning back to what medicine used to be was this recent visit to see other physicians and I just forgot how much it sucks the drain the energy I, I I know they were kind of hope, recruiting or what's your practice? Oh your internal medicine, oh your primary care, would you you know and I I could barely breathe to get out of the building saying, I, I can't do that. <laughs> I I can't yep. do that. And you know, I'll I'll share some of the ideas that um, that you know, a documentary like yours is exactly where you don't just need a 10 minute YouTube video to learn keto. Yes, that can inspire you, but I think it is that sequence of watching people who really have resurrected their health out of either the depths of a, of a ditch full of problems or the, the precipice of what is about to be this cliff that you cannot walk back from that I mean, we've all seen that where dementia a couple of years in those few kind of glitches moments and you can do a couple things saying mm, you go an another couple of years and reversing that becomes nearly impossible i've never seen that done and i've been working with brains for 20 years and so you say a documentary like yours can do that um, and what your hopes for are what i think is powerful that longer story to say see you can do this too and I think that's what physicians need. When I was uh, shaking palms, uh, I, nobody knew I was a keto doctor. They had not Googled me or looked. Uh, they just knew I was a new internist in town. And he said, yeah, I tried that keto thing for a while, but, you know, it doesn't have any fiber. And, I, you know, I, I got diverticulitis in a week. And I'm just thinking, you had diverticulitis all the whole time. You just, <laughs> you just 
to know what you're doing <laughs> to yep. take away fiber that quickly and then to know here's some steps that you might want to do the next time around but that same process of what we've learned is yep here is a season and just like that physician who now says i won't recommend it to patients here's what happened to me and you're like ah that that's a trap um as i look at some of the kind of avenues that i don't know where it's going to play out but i'll i'll let you uh be in on the next thing that's going to happen in my world in the next week which is I, I, I relaunched the online course and, um, and when I first launched it, it was during COVID. I was actually in Hawaii and I, I wasn't sure what to charge for an online course. So I thought, well, um, we'll start at um, $200. And there were so many people that bought the course the first day it crashed the website. So the next time around, I, I raised it to $300. And now I'm, it's still at that price, but we're gonna take it to a couple hundred dollars higher after this round. Uh, because what I really want to attract uh, to to take the course are people who will be willing to uh, lead in on lead a um, small group. Uh, so much like what we did in addiction medicine, uh, you were required to come and to be present with other people, and that uh, that act of showing up in a small group and sharing your struggles allowed them to see things they've never seen before, especially in addiction where they often come from an absence of grace. They just don't know how to forgive themselves when they screw it up. They don't know how to be uh, full of um, uh, empathy for other people when they screw it up, quick to judge. And that's a that's a profile for people who stay very addicted. And I find that's a, a common theme within um, addiction to carbs where you can get them on, you know, in seven days, you probably did a great job. But if you follow those patients in your, or those people in your documentary out in a year, how could we continue to improve their health? And it does, they need a support system. And that doesn't need to cost a lot of money. It, in fact, you can do one yourself. And so I looked up what's the cost of the first time visit to see a doctor, and it is $500 now. Uh, not that we got that, but that's what the corporations would charge. And yep. what, so I think that's about what the next uh, price raise will be for the online course after uh, this next week's worth of sales. But uh, in the past, I've always done a bonus round where they would get live Q and A's about the different steps of the ketogenic diet. But this time I'm going to, to do a, a small group from Tampa uh, where I'm looking for patients who want to, or not patients, I can't say patients. Uh, I'm looking for people who want to join that small group. Uh, and if you live in Tampa and you're willing to come for five weeks in a row that you would be part of this small group, I need you to send an email to hello at bozmd.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at bozmd.com. And over the next week, we will be inviting people who are willing to be part of that. We're gonna choose, we think about eight to 10 people to come to the small group and we will follow you um, for the five weeks of the course as we roll out uh, these five weeks of support. And I don't know if, um, I don't know if that's the right plan, but I have been running small groups for keto uh, for the last three years and um, it's free, I just, I haven't started it here yet in Tampa, and I've found that when you engage patients in the long story, that they might not be in the first week of keto, they might be have fallen off the wagon a couple of times, but when you can example to them how their, um, how their life could be better um, by sh not just saying the stuff that you and I have said over and over again, but instead by uh, saying, watch Mrs. Smith, or Mrs. Smith, why don't you tell them what happened when you struggled with high blood pressure and then you got off your medications then you fell off the wagon and you got back on them. And I just think those patient stories, much like I'm sure your documentary will share, that it's in the stories of how this changes over time that really does um, reward people for becoming the best versions of their health. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can uh, roll the dice and see how that goes over the next six, next few months. I'm, I've I've never done it this way, so I, we'll see we'll see how it turns out. Well, I hope that I hope that goes well for you. 
Um, I really appreciate you having me on this evening. I've got a, another thing coming up at the top of the hour I need to get ready for. It's always a pleasure chatting with you, Dr. Bosworth. Uh, you're doing great work down in Tampa. And hopefully one of these days we'll be able to meet up again in person. Yes, well, and I do apologize. Poor Dr. Barry has not been able to see what's going on. So usually the funnest part about these things is we not only get to see, talk to each other, but we get to see each other. So Ken, you are a trooper. Thanks for uh, dealing with that glitch. and. Um, why don't you again tell people where they can find this documentary? Yep, so it's called Reversed and it's available on, on Glued TV, G L E W E D dot TV. If you have a Roku you, uh, subscription, you can get it there. If you have a, a, a Fire Stick, you can get it on that. If you have Apple TV, you can get it on that. Or you can just go to their website, either True uh, Your Health Network dot com or uh, glued.tv and watch all the eight episodes for free on your on your laptop or on your cell phone if you don't have a smart TV that'll pick it up and hopefully in a few months it'll be sold to a bigger bigger network mm. so that it's available without all the little uh, gimmicks. So um, we'll put that in the show notes below so people can copy those links. Um, can you, uh, would it it's one of the things I would ask my 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 subscribers to do is to share the idea. So again, when you are trying to change things, as much as we can pay for the advertisement of his documentary, or we can try to, you know, do the Google AdWords, there is nothing more valuable. Just like the reviews of the books that I read at the beginning of the of of the show, when you review Dr. Barry's book, his book does better. When you share the idea of this documentary with other people on your social media, that is what is most powerful. And we've all seen the the ways when we start paying for those points of advice that uh, political things happen that aren't as genuine. There is nothing they yep. can do to restrict your personal recommendation of sharing his documentary and helping the awareness be there so that he's successful and then he can do this again or maybe follow up with the people with whatever his uh, whatever his plan is for that. So, Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot for having me, Doc. Uh, hope, hope to see you again soon. You were at, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. All right, everybody, so thank you for hanging in there. Again, I have played with the sound buttons as much as I could over the, <laughs> over the past uh, hour. And we are actually, um, I just wanna make sure that it was clear, Dr. Barry is um, really working uh, in so many different levels. Uh, the documentary is one thing he's been doing. I know he's working on another book and uh, he's doing some organizing of trying to get real speakers back together. So if you um, if you really do have uh, the passion to help um, other people learn about the ketogenic diet, you know, sharing his stuff, sharing uh, the stuff that we do, it, that is the best way to say thank you. So I appreciate that. Um, I am going to just recap what I was trying to explain to him because I wasn't sure how much, uh, how long that uh, he was going to get to stick around. So yes, the price of the keto uh, of consistently keto, the online course, and you'll see those links below. That is going to go up after this next week, and um, I am again trying to find a way that the value of what you show up for is matched. So. Um, what I want from the next week is anybody who lives in the Tampa area. I am looking for people who will come live to be part of what, what I would do with patients over the next five weeks. So we'll launch the course and in two weeks we'll have our first um, live uh, support group. And if you've bought the course in the past uh, or if you, are, if you buy it in, during this launch, you will get to join and watch me deliver the uh, live uh, uh, support groups that I've been doing for several years. I do think this is the secret sauce for people to stay consistently keto, to get to that point where they do get autophagy, they can take off the, some of those long-term medications. And it's not something that you can teach as well as you can show. So instead of doing the two plus hours of question and answers for each of the modules in the course, instead, I think it would be, and we took a poll of several of our neurons saying that uh, they would love to watch how it is that I set up a small group and what do I do with that. So um, next week we'll have um, a um, kind of a, 
a, a Zoom for those who write in that uh, agree that they could come for this many weeks in a row at this time. And so if you want to be part of that, I will um, take this take this away and put this up here. Oopsie, yeah, I mean this away. Uh, so hello at bozmd.com. That's the email that you send in to say, hey, I live in Tampa. Um, you know, if you if you know where the stadium is in town, I live about a, or my office is about a half a mile from the stadium. So if uh, if you're interested in being part of the small group, it will be free, and I am just looking for about eight to ten people that can commit to the five weeks so that we get a consistent set of stories that we follow. And then after that, I I do think I'm going to open my support group, which I'd been doing in Sioux Falls, and that's a whole other discussion. So if if you are interested in being part of that support group, please write into the channel, and then we'll get um, we'll get back to you with how we'll select a group of you for next Tuesday that um, I'll do a, a Zoom with to say here's what's expected of you. And you can back out if you say I don't think I can do it, um, but mostly I am. Uh, I'm trying to offer how to how to lift the um, the leaders who can run a support group, and I'm trying to demonstrate that uh, in this bonus part for the next online course. So I think it's going to be. Uh, I'm actually excited. I have yet to see a patient, and they're moving to another state requires just a lot of stuff. Um, so this is going to be a, a hunger for me, which I haven't been face to face with patients uh, since our move from South Dakota, and. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, the final thing before I check my numbers and sign off is that on the website, I do want you to take the time, if you've ever considered being part of it, um, it is a pretty steep price that we're increasing the, the price to. Um, but I am trying to filter and say, who is, who is interested in being a leader in the ketogenic world? And that's really what I'm sorting for. Um, that, uh, see if I can go back to this. Um, let me see. Hold on one second. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to show you this one more time real quick because I think I went through it kind of fast with uh, Dr. Barry there. So if you look, this uh, is the top of my page at bosmd.com. If you just scroll down that page uh, and get um, past the online course and see what are the reviews, um, you know, that uh, process of Clicking through reviews, this is uh, John's, but there are several in here that if you um, click through and take a look at, um, you know, just what they've had to say, uh, I really am so thankful about the people that took the time to write the reviews about the course. Um, and I'm looking for forward to the next, what I'd like to say, generation of people that are interested in the course. and. Um, and hopefully I get to meet some great people that live here in Tampa. So, all right, we are going to check my numbers uh, at the end of the show. And because it's the top of the hour, we are just going to not do any of the giveaways. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the Dr. Barry uh, episode. And if, you know, if you want him on again, which I've, I would love to, uh, it is all about just letting him know that, um, that uh, we support him, that his efforts to be on our show we're, we're worth it so he can uh, see that we're recommending his documentary. Let's see, where's my little poker? Uh, so give that a, give it a shout that you can, um, that you heard about it here on the Dr. Boz show, but that you are uh, recommending his, his documentary for others. Okay, so yes, here is my glucose. And again, I don't think I got quite, <laughs> maybe half of my drink in, so I'm not sure how much of this will make a difference, but uh, my ketones now we'll check. There we go. So counting down the ketones and the uh, glucose, uh, about the same as it was at the beginning. And um, again, those of you that are looking forward to, uh, so yeah, ketone, ketones did go up a little bit, uh, glucose the same. If somebody wants to calculate that Dr. Bob's ratio, um, uh, I'm just going to answer a couple of the other questions about the cost. Yes, you can absolutely learn a lot of what you need to learn about the ketogenic diet on YouTube. The books that both uh, Dr. Barry and I have written are another very affordable way to do this. Uh, what I've found is when people buy the course, 
Um, if you share your username and password with your sister and your mother and your friend, I don't care. I care that it's another way to learn. And so I know that several of you have said, I'm trying to get my dad to do the ketogenic diet. I'm trying to get my sister to do the ketogenic diet. And if they won't, they're just not interested enough to read a book or listen to the audiobook. Um, but maybe you can get them to watch a sequence of videos. And instead of popping all over YouTube and trying to find the ones that, how do you prepare? What do you do the first week? Um, by golly, that that is where the value is. So again, you can share the username and password. I don't care. I want you educated. And this is a tool that I think is very organized. It's how I run my, my uh, implementation of somebody on a ketogenic journey. And again, I, I'm trying to get people who want a tribe. And so I have a lot of people that have bought the course and they only, they just, they didn't follow through. What I want are people that are gonna follow through and share, share that information. Uh, because like Dr. Barry said, we don't need 51% of the population for a tipping point. We need a lot of uh, success stories that are leading other people. And I think that's in a support group. That's why I'm trying to demonstrate it for this next launch. I think that if you have the tools, and I think using that online course is short videos, it's a tool. And I, I, I really want you to see it as, that, that, um, as a fulcrum, as you use what I have offered and try to launch other people into the best next step. So uh, having said that, we are at the top of the hour. So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. I do have, for those of you watching this on the replay, uh, that fiber story has come up several times and several people have written in about the fiber story. I'm gonna ask you to click on the link to this next video where I totally describe fiber, break it down and tell you why. Why is fiber not so important on the ketogenic diet? Uh, so if you're interested in that, give that a click and we'll